to Aung San Suu Kyi, I would say to her, you can fool some of the people some of the time, all of the people all of the time, you'll never fool all the people all the time. So let me say to you, we are disappointed in you, you should have spoken out much louder. It's not too late to recover your soul. You've lost your soul, you've lost your integrity, you've lost your sense of decency by defending the detention of these uh, two uh, Reuters journalists and all that has been happening to the Rohingya people. Last year at the UN General Assembly, the leaders correctly focused on the terrible tragedy facing the Rohingya people of Burma, where close to a million people were driven out of their homes into Bangladesh, where people were raped, murdered, and killed in large numbers. We have done a campaign here in New York to make the world know who is responsible for this terrible atrocity. So the leader of the military, Min Ong Lai, as the head of the army, has been responsible for all the atrocities that have happened to the Rohingya people. Just listen to these words. By a woman who survived. Soldiers tied my hands together. Four of them took me, and all four raped me. From a Rohingya woman who's 20 years old. Today at the General Assembly, there is no mention about the Rohingya. We must remind ourselves that this issue has been going on for a long time. It's not as if suddenly there was an attack on this minority. It's not as if this is the only minority that is under threat. In both Kachin and Shan states in Myanmar, just as in Rakhine state, minorities are under threat call on the leaders here at the General Assembly to stand up, to take action, not to let a mass murderer get away with impunity. I ask the leaders of each of the countries that are here, sadly most of them are men, but we ask them, would they be as timid and as passive as they are, if it was their mothers, if it was their sisters, if it was their wives, if it was their friends, having to experience the kind of atrocities that the people of Rakhine State and the Rohingya have experienced, and particularly the women and young children that have been suffering so much. And let's bear in mind, those that have survived are in large numbers, but also thousands have been killed brutally. We cannot be silent, and once again, the world needs to know the space this is a face that's been hidden from the world and the world needs to ensure that justice is done and accountability is secured and that Min Ong Lang and his generals do not get away with impurity and with mass murder. We are now going to... Ah, hello. Hi. How are you? Who is this guy? Have you seen a photograph of him before? Take a photo of him because this is this is the person that the whole world used to see because basically basically he has stayed out of the public uh, eye as a result he's been doing all of these things uh, but with no accountability so our effort here is to try to keep up the visibility around him to get leaders here to act because they always say so we want all the leaders of the United Nations, all the heads of state, they will have to pass this way. There's several of these posters all over the city, but especially close to the United Nations headquarters. This is our small attempt to try to create awareness, to create visibility and to ensure that the people who have lost their lives and the people, are, the Rohingya people are suffering now in Bangladesh 
uh, are justice is required to them. We will never be able to wipe out the terrible, terrible, terrible atrocities that they have uh, faced already. But let's at least do the best we can now to ensure that people are safe, that people can return back to their villages that were torched and burnt and so on. And that can only happen if those that were responsible for the atrocities, like Gun Ang Lang and the other generals, if they are held accountable, that they are prosecuted, and that they do not get away with the impunity. So, we are now uh, going to take the message all over New York City. Uh, we're going to take it to closest to the United Nations as the police will allow us to get to, so that the leaders of the United Nations and all the representatives of all the governments that are here cannot say we didn't know. Up to now, they have been saying, well, we don't know what even they look like. So our objective here is to make sure, starting from today, that the world will know who the lead of atrocities, something that the world has not seen for a long time on such a large scale. We are quite close, by the way, to the United Nations, uh, but the posters and the messaging is uh, pretty much all the way to the United Nations. And we hope that this image we will release to the media and we will put on social media and so on, begins to break the lack of transparency that we have seen. Uh, around uh, who's responsible for what's happening. The very positive thing we would say is that the International Criminal Court has now started proceedings against Min Aung Lai. This is a person that Amnesty International named in a report a long time ago, at least a year ago, and we're very happy that the United Nations' own uh, report has actually um, confirmed all the findings of the amnesty report that came out much earlier. But that is little comfort for the people who have lost their lives. It's very little comfort for people who have been raped. It's very little comfort for people who have lost family members. And it sickens me, to be honest, that we constantly come here to the United Nations and we talk, 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 and the leaders are just not able to take on the things that they absolutely need to be taking on. And the fact that we can have President Trump right now carrying on. At the, as I'm speaking to you, President Trump is speaking at the General Assembly, going on about how great the economy of the U.S. is, how great he's done, forgetting that uh, the U.S. and other Security Council members like China are absolutely complicit in the fact that uh, there are so many atrocities happening around the world where thousands and thousands of people are being killed without anybody standing up for them. So yes, on, on, on Burma, on, sorry, in Myanmar, it's, um, it's uh, China who appears to be blocking a Security Council progress, but then you have uh, the US who is blocking on progress in Yemen, uh, and so on. So the most powerful leaders of the world must carry responsibility, and what we are trying to do here is uh, no opportunity to say we didn't know who was responsible because this is uh, a report not just from Amnesty but also from uh, uh, from the UN itself. We're looking for the truck, by the way. The truck seems to be chased by the police, so uh, we'll keep walking until we find the truck. <laughs> Uh, so it was just ahead of us a second ago, and then uh, I think we were pushed there because New York completely clamps down during the uh, General Assembly. And, uh, so how old is possible like, an act of civil disobedience? This is a very, uh, very minuscule act of civil disobedience. Uh, 
But let me know right now, there are so few opportunities for people to be able to get the message out. We need to use all means available. Because sadly, while the mainstream media likes to show, you know, that show the atrocities that are happening, um, sometimes I think they can do better at bringing the kind of investigative journalism that we need to uncover who's responsible and highlight who's responsible. But having said that, I would like to use this opportunity to pay tribute to the two Reuters journalists who were convicted to seven years hard labor in prison from the Rohingya community in Rakhine State. Uh, and I should tell you that uh, an update on what's happening, the truck has disappeared. So... Let's sign off. I'm not sure we're going to find it. So let me just end by saying thank you for watching. Please share the image of Mun and Lang. Make sure that the world knows who he is. If he has nothing to hide, he should not feel afraid to go to the uh, International Criminal Court and defend himself. Uh, we call upon Aung San Suu Kyi and other political leaders to say enough is enough and no more. You have to stand up, you have to take responsibility. And to Aung San Suu Kyi, I would say to her, you can fool some of the people some of the time, all of the people all of the time. You'll never fool all the people all the time. So let me say to you, we are disappointed in you. You should have spoken out much louder. It's not too late to recover your soul. You've lost your soul, you've lost your integrity, you've lost your sense of decency by defending the detention of these uh, two uh, Reuters journalists and all that has been happening to the Rohingya people. Thank you.